and the fireworks code. Competitions, offers, stories, and all your ITV and Channel 4 programs for the week ahead in TV Times. You've seen the affair. You've heard the tapes. What next? Now, victims of the credit boom in the time, the place. Morning all, the time is 10 o'clock, the place is Nottingham, and there are a mere 47 shopping days until Christmas. Now, I don't want to worry you by telling you that, but uh, the truth of the matter is today we are talking about credit and debt, how, and the number of shopping days to Christmas is clearly extremely relevant. Now, however high interest rates may go, you just can't get away from people wanting to lend you money, eager to tell you how easy it'll be to pay it back. Most of us can cope, but some people get into a terrible mess as their debts pile up and up. And what we want to do is to investigate that kind of mess and try to stop as many people as possible from getting into it in the future. Now, if I may turn to you, I know you had a very bad time. How much did you owe at the worst moment in your problem? At uh, worst point, £5,000. £5,000? Yeah. And had you walked knowingly into that situation or had you got there by mistake? Mostly by mistake. Some of it we knew about, but the majority of it was unknowing. It, what, I mean, was it a variety of little things you'd bought or one big car? Um, to start with, I, I purchased a car, but that was when I was single. But when I met my wife and we got married, it was a number of little things that we needed to set up home. And before you knew it, you were well gone. What, I mean, a toaster, a three-piece well, sweet? Three-piece sweet, um, to start off with um, the wedding. That was the first thing. Then the car failed, so I had to replace the car. Um, then the, we couldn't keep up the payments, so we then got another loan to put them all together. Um, then we couldn't pay that, so we got another little one, and it just kept going. The more loans we got, the more we seemed to get in debt. You cleared one, the other built up. So basically, uh, there was seldom, if ever, good news rattling through the letterbox. It was always a, a letterbox you preferred not to go near. That's true, yeah. If I can turn to your wife, what was that doing to your marriage? It was a strain, because uh, you knew the letters were coming. Cause you, and you, you, know, you, you knew that you'd, you'd got it building up, and um, you knew the payments were due. So you'd, you'd try and pay things. Uh, when you could, you know, instead of organising it properly, we just sort of, whoever made the most noise, we'd pay first. So a but letter would come and you worry about it and then you manage to get the money together so you'd pay it and then before that you'd manage to pay it, another one would come. But the time came when you were trying to control the situation and you were trying to diminish it. Now, how much were you actually ha allowing yourselves a week to live on as opposed to paying off debts? We, Steve's wage was £100 a week and we paid out £75 a week in debt and we lived on the rest. You had 25 quid a week yeah, but to I spend mean, on what, food? We didn't spend it all on food, you know, I mean, £14 a week is what we were spending. I used the family allowance, I had two children, <coughs> I was waiting, I'd had a new baby, and I was waiting for the family allowance to come through, so we lived on £14 a week. And you were managing, slowly, to cope with it, or were you no, merely... No, we were... You were we, merely keeping the debt situation we stable? Had, um, we were going down. We, we were, going were still going down. There was no such thing as stable. There's it no was, stability. It's, right it's pff, You go down and you we, keep we going had, down um, fast.